All right, YouTube, it is about 1 a.m. I'll see you guys tomorrow after be at work by 9. Are you ready? Let's do this. Let's make it daytime now. Three, two, one. Whoa! Wait, I have a different sweater on. Where's my blue one? Midori, what are you doing? What are you doing with my Dev Slice sweater with the link in the description below? <laughs> anyway, let's go. You're keeping me on. Yeah, I'm strapped in. Stuck in a song. You can't turn on. YouTube, so we are inside. I got a scrambler, scrambled eggs, scrambler eggs. Me, Dora got oatmeal, and I got coffee. <clears throat> I got an OC scrambler, pretty delicious, right here. Got some meat. Me, Dora got her omelet as usual. Look at that it's beautiful girl. Omelet. Oh, wait, what you got? You got oatmeal. Sounds the same thing. She got her oatmeal. Me, Dora, how was it? Was it pretty good? It was. My oatmeal was great. It was great? Yeah. So click at that link. Oh, thank yous. I have three monitors. Uh-oh. What's going on? So Adam, I have a question, bro. I have a question since you What's came up? back here. When are you making a YouTube channel? Oh my god. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I made, I've made two videos and I Why you deleted? Delete it? I Just post it. Them Guys, just tell him to post a video. Everyone who wants to start a web developer vlog type of channel, just know this, just do it. I started off with my iPhone. Coding Face is doing really good, and all he does is talk live videos. All he does is just, literally, we could do a live video together, and all he does is just talk to the camera. So you don't have to edit it like how I do, right? I have no intention of editing anything. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> so, just do it. All right, YouTube. He will post the video very soon, very soon, very soon. What is up YouTube? I hope everyone is doing well. I want to welcome everyone to Ask a Dev episode number 12. And so what I want to talk about um, is, are coding boot camps really worth it? As I say what's up everyone, say what's up. You guys will be on the vlog. All right guys, always appreciate that. Love you all, bye. What is up YouTube? It is Saturday. It is the day before Mother's Day and I want to visit my mom in Nevada, Las Vegas. It is about 9.51 a.m. My estimated time of arrival is about 2 p.m. So, let's go. All right, ooh baby just hold tight We're up at the moonlight Believe in the magic On sight, we'll make it feel just right Just look at that bright light all right, YouTube, I'm here. I'm home. Here's my red car. <laughs> How do you know it's not my car? Because it has Nevada license plates, and I'm not from Nevada. But I'm here. My mom just texted me the code to the entrance of the house. I'm in Vegas. Let's say hi to my family. Where's your stuff? Hey! Hey! You guys miss you? I'm here in the house right now. My mom is right there watching TV because she's never ever home because she works so hard. Right, mom? Right. I'm here in fries, but I have no idea where the cameras are. Shoot. Hi, right, YouTube. You guys know how I bought the Osmo Pro Mobile for my phone? Uh, this is the one for uh, DSLR cameras. It's about $700, but I will plan I'll probably buy it in about two months. Can't wait to get it though. <laughs> Left fries. I didn't buy anything and I was thinking about it. I was walking around the store. Fries practically has everything you could ever like want, but I don't know. I just felt like I have everything I need for my camera. I miss my house. I'm not gonna lie. I miss California. I remember why I wanted to leave Vegas because there's really nothing to do here. I mean, everything's far from each other. No friends here. Midori's not here. I'm happy to be here with my parents, nice to visit, but I'm not lying, I am homesick. I'm really homesick. <laughs> Alright, 
Got to go. Wow, I have a big pimple right there. Look at that. <laughs> I'm actually gonna leave Vegas a little sooner than expected because I'm dying from allergies from these darn dogs. It's all your fault. I can't spend time with my mom. It's all your fault. He's so cute. I have some pretty bad allergies right now, but I'm gonna leave Vegas actually tonight around 8.30 p.m. Arrive back at home by 12.30 a.m. Hopefully I don't crash in the way. But let me show you my mom. She's wearing her home clothes, but that's okay. Let me show you my mom really quick, YouTube. Let me show you my mom in high def 1080p. Where you get, wait, why are you leaving? Hey, where are you going? Mom, you leaving? Oh my. All right, YouTube, so I'm here at the grocery store. Got a gym, gonna get some healthy food. Uh, but what I really wanna talk about today are what are bad habits that self-taught developers pretty much develop or what are bad habits self-taught programmers develop um, early in the stages in their career and what are things that we need to watch out so we don't do that ourselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and even share things that I experienced on my own while I go grocery shopping. <laughs> the reason that I think that this is really important is because during the first half, or actually you could say the first year, and my first year as a junior developer, and I've only been a junior developer for about a year and two months, is that I always thought that I knew everything there was about code. But the problem was, or the question I didn't ask myself was, did I know good code? Or did I know how to make maintainable code that's easier for anyone to read? And that is why I think this topic is very important to talk about today. Uh, one of the first mistakes that I've made actually all 12 months as a developer, I didn't document my code well. I always made my code, I always made a function in JavaScript, but I rarely ever documented what it was I was doing, what did that function do, what was this variable for. Um, and I think that's a problem that a lot of us make because I've been working at the company for uh, about 12 months already and there are many types of web pages that I made functions in JavaScript where only I can read it and the problem was if someone comes in and tries to look at my code would they be able to read it would they be able to make updates and changes and a lot of times they wouldn't because it would be so hard to read it'll take them so long just to make the changes they need to make and that is one mistake that I made is that I honestly just need to document more and make it easy to read uh, <laughs> Actually, the reason I mentioned this is because last week my senior developer was looking at my JavaScript. He said, Chris, this works, but dude, your code is like, it's horrible. It's hard to read right now. And so he told me, which I started doing last week was documenting my code well, putting comments everywhere, make it easier to read for anyone, even a junior developer to get on it. So that's number one. <laughs> I think the second thing that I've really learned a lot about myself, I focus too much on, I think, just learning very specific languages. For example, I was very focused on JavaScript, jQuery, HTML, and CSS, and really focused on learning PHP, which isn't bad, of course, within your first year. But one thing I'm noticing is that because I want to become a better programmer, because I want to make better decisions and just overall become better, I'm actually looking to learning Ruby now. And although Ruby on Rails isn't as popular as it used to be, it's still very popular. So I'm uh, making a goal this year now, within my second year as become, being a web developer, a junior developer, is, not, is now it's not only learn PHP and MySQL, but now my new goal is to also learn Ruby on Rails and Ruby on top of that. And so, so don't stick to one thing, don't stick to just the LAMP stack or you know, all these different other stacks, but really look on getting better and just learning overall more languages to become an overall better programmer. Another mistake I think a lot of junior developers make within the first year or even software developers is trying to be too clever with your code where, for example, a lot of times when within my first couple months, I thought I always had to make like one-liner functions where I could create a lot of code in just four lines and make it do a lot of things. And essentially that is good. That could be a good programmer. But in the long run, the problem with that is that it could be very hard to maintain in the long run. Let's say you're going to another website and then now you're integrating with Angular or jQuery and it can mess that up. And so I think it's very important to be able to know that it's okay that you create a function that has a lot of lines of code. What's most important is that in the end, no matter what you're working on, it's okay if you have a hundred lines of code. In the end, what's most important is that it's easy to read, easy to maintain, and gets the job done. 
stop trying to just leave your pride at the door and it's not I mean it's, it looks nice to have like short a few lines of code but in the end that doesn't matter so let's go to the next one I think another thing that junior developers tend to uh, think or believe is that um, you need to be able to code fast and that's what I thought again for the first six months in my career and after doing this for about 12 months professionally I've realized that that's not the case I mean, of course the clients and the managers want us to get projects done quickly but more than getting it done quickly um, are you finding bugs on your own or are clients finding bugs after you shipped it live and so it's not about getting things done fast but it's getting the job done well uh, that will make you look so much more better than what I've been doing the last couple months which was uh, getting products done quickly and then having many bugs on it <laughs> and so that's one tip that I honestly really really highly suggest because I've made that mistake many many times so make sure that when you are given a project or even when you're coding on your own it's okay that if you're stuck on a problem for a little while you don't you're not expected to get it done quickly and it's okay if you do if you do then great if not don't be so don't get so hard on yourself focus get the job done do it well and you'll be much more recognized because of that Last but not least, wow, look at that sky, time lapse. <laughs> uh, the last thing I want to talk about um, when making a website, specifically things, this is what I learned from my own mistakes, is that when I made a website, um, what I usually would do is that I would make the website in a way where it would really match myself rather than who I'm making it for. For example, I made a registration page for like a lot of people who are retired already. I made a registration page for people who really didn't know how to use a computer. <laughs> and so I made it really intricate. I made a UI UX really cool, but I made it for young adults like me or you who know how to browse the internet very well. But a lot of people who are already watching and a lot of people who are already, who were just trying to buy a simple ticket, all they wanted was a simple button click. And other than that, all they wanted was the ability to be able to put in their name and the amount of tickets they want and that was it. So um, I think that is something that we need to be able to remember is that when we're building websites is really look at the human factor, uh, really look at what it is that the client's really looking for, what can I do to make it easy for the client not just easy for me. And that is one thing that I've made a bunch of mistakes on where yes it makes sense to me but I think the biggest thing that you have to focus on as a web developer, self-taught developer mainly is to make everything dumb proof. Everything stupid proof, where even the slowest, most, I don't know, not someone who's not smart, someone who doesn't know how to browse the internet, will be able to browse your interface very easily. And that's something that I'm still learning to this day too. So, yeah, that's it guys. I mean, I know there's not much, so hopefully it helped you out. Uh, these are things that I've learned on my own. I've actually looked, looked at what other mistakes are, and I realized, shoot, those are things that I'm doing too. And so I really hope that this list that I shared with you guys will help you out in your career as you try to get your first job as a junior web developer. So, and you know what, this is not just for junior developers or people who don't have jobs yet, but this is actually for people who are looking to get hired and want to make sure that they don't make their mistakes. And when they take that job, they're able to do it right away. But all right, gotta go. Uh, thank you guys for watching this. Um, I'm gonna end of vlog right here. Probably gonna end it with a time lapse of that really cool sky behind me. Shoot. But alright guys, this is it. This is the end of the vlog. Thank you for watching. Thank you for enjoying my journey to Vegas and back and now here. Uh, and this is the end of the vlog. This is Krishan. This is Life the Web Developer. And I'm out. Bye.